We all know crashes happen in our apps, but it's hard to know which ones happen often, what causes them, or what to fix first. We find out about crashes in reviews, social media, and sometimes even panicked emails. Usually these are really hard to investigate, and when you don't know how many people the issue impacts, it's hard to decide what to tackle first. You might have noticed that we added Crashlytics to the Firebase dashboard. It's our primary crash reporting solution for Firebase. Firebase Crashlytics helps you track, prioritize, and fix stability issues that erode your app quality. Most importantly, it does all this in real time. It synthesizes an avalanche of crashes into a manageable list of issues, provides contextual information, and highlights the severity and prevalence of crashes so you can pinpoint the root cause faster. With Firebase Crashlytics, you spend less time triaging and troubleshooting issues and more time doing what you love, building new app features. So let's explore Crashlytics in this episode of Firecast. It's happened to all of us. You release a new version of your app and suddenly you hear that the new feature you launched is causing crashes. It's important to get as much information about these crashes as fast as possible. To start analyzing stack traces and getting alerts about your crashes in real time when they happen, let's set up Firebase Crashlytics. I'm going to use our Firebase Code Lab app, Friendly Chat, but you can go ahead and follow along in your favorite app. The process should be nearly the same. So I've already got my app set up to use Firebase by creating a project in the Firebase console, downloading the Google service plist file, and adding it to my Xcode project. Finally, I'll install Firebase through CocoaPods. Don't know what I'm talking about? Check out this video first. OK, let's install Crashlytics. There are two things you need to do to add Crashlytics to your app after getting Firebase set up. Add the dependencies, in this case CocoaPods, and set up a run script build phase. So let's open our pod file in Xcode and add Fabric and Crashlytics pods. After that, I'm going to run pod install to update the dependencies. Let's go back to Xcode. Take a moment and check out the debug information format in our build settings. To get a readable stack trace, we need to use dwarf with dsim for all build types. This is usually set up by default, but it's also worth checking. This will make sure our builds generate dsim files to allow us to get clear stack traces with line numbers and method names. Next, we'll add the run script build phase. I select the project file in the navigator, then open up the build phases tab. I'll hit plus here and select new run script build phase to run a script on each build. The script we just added uploads your desymbolication files to Firebase so we can show detailed stack traces. Without these desymb files, we'd see raw stack traces with non-readable logs like these. The reason why is to protect your source code and to optimize your app at runtime. Xcode compiles your code into machine code before it runs on a device. Crashlytics will turn that machine code from a raw crash report back into a readable stack trace. To make sure we have the files to do that, just make sure the Crashlytics run script build phase is set up. So now we're set up, but how do we test it? I'm going to hop into the fcviewcontroller.swift and add a crash button that calls a didPressCrash method. And in that method, we'll just call assert false. We could also use the Crashlytics helper method over here. Before we test the crash, let's turn on debug mode so that we can get some logs in the console. To do that, in our did finish launching with options method, add fabric.sharedSDK.debug equals true. OK, let's test the crash. But we need to make sure that we detach from Xcode, as its debugger will prevent us from being able to report the crash. First, I press play to build and run my app. Then I'll press stop with an Xcode. And now I'll run it again from within the simulator without having the Xcode debugger attached. This time, my app properly crashes. Now I can run it a second time to upload the crash reports to the Crashlytics servers. For the second time, I can either run it directly from the simulator or build and run from Xcode. Either way works, although if you run it from Xcode, you can see this crashes uploaded successfully line. Now in the Firebase console, I'll click on Crashlytics, and our crash now shows. At the top, I get a summary of my crash for user rate and the number of crashes and users I've seen. I can also filter by version and set custom time ranges to dig deeper in the trends in my app. At the bottom, I can see a list of issues with their type, crash or non-fatal, what versions they've occurred in, and the raw number of crashes and number of users affected. If I click into this issue, I can see which versions have been most impacted. 
what devices, and which OS versions were most impacted. At the bottom of the page is the most recent session, SACTRACE, for this crash. You can click to see each individual crash's stack trace from individual sessions. If my DSIMs have been uploaded correctly, my crash reports will look something like this, where I can see the method names in my stack trace. Notice the keys and logs section. More on that now. Okay, so we've got basic crash reporting working, but sometimes more information helps us get to the bottom of what's happening. Maybe there's a weird string in a text field that's causing a crash, or maybe a crash only happens in a certain level in my game. There are two ways I can do this. Firebase Crashlytics will automatically add analytics events to its crash report logs when you experience a crash. Here you can see the different screen views and the login event. This is a good way of seeing what your user has done within the app before it started crashing. This is really helpful because sometimes your users use your app in ways you just don't expect. Crashlytics also lets you add logs and key value pairs to add even more information to your crash reports. In Swift, you can use CLS log V or CLS NS log V to help pinpoint issues. There are two things to keep in mind when using these methods. You can store up to 64 KB of logs before the crash happens, which means you can store server responses or anything else you want. Custom keys help you get the specific state of your app leading up to the crash. You can associate any arbitrary key value pair within your crash report and see them in the Firebase console. Check out our docs for more. The last feature of Crashlytics to cover today is non-fatal exceptions. In addition to automatically reporting your app's crashes, Crashlytics lets you log non-fatal exceptions. On iOS, you do that by recording an NS error object. Crashlytics reports this and groups it much like crashes. An NS error object has three main arguments, domain, code, and user info. Unlike fatal crashes, which are grouped via stack trace analysis, Logged errors are grouped by NS error, domain, and code. Crashlytics offers faster processing of crashes, broader crash coverage, and more sophisticated analysis with real-time alerts than our previous crash reporting solution. It also offers the ability to create custom logs and keys to collect information and context on the events that led up to the crash. The team's continuing to work on big new features to help make Crashlytics even more powerful, and we can't wait for you to try them out. And that's Crashlytics for iOS. We've been looking forward to having it be part of Firebase. If you want to find out more, check out our documentation or the friendly chat iOS code lab. Thanks for watching.